Hi, my name is Bruno Silva. I'm one of the dentists at Brighton Implant Clinic and today we're going to do a video on um, some slides that we put together and I hope that you will like um, how we're putting this uh, little small presentation together. Might be helpful if you're a dentist and just looking for some extra tips uh, in terms of how to provide treatment or if you're a patient it might be helpful just to see uh, different approaches to treatment. So we're going to look at a case. Um, this is a very lovely lady that came to see us. She's um, a healthcare worker who was um, had some extensive dental treatment carried out uh, some time ago. Uh, she was overall happy with the results. It was quite extensive work uh, carried out with uh, multiple crowns and bridges on both natural teeth and implants. And as I said, overall, she was happy, only that uh, recently she started to develop some problems with her gums and she had some discomfort, especially um, around some of the gums around her implants. And in particular, on the uh, lower left side, she found that when she was brushing and flossing, she noticed some discomfort and also had sometimes uh, some, some swelling and a bad taste and smell coming from that area. So this work was carried out about 18 months, completed about 18 months ago, and it was done abroad and the patient for convenience purposes struggled to get back and uh, deal with the practice that had helped her initially. So she came to see us for a second opinion. So uh, she's in her mid fifties, a very, very nice uh, patient. And uh, after doing the initial um, assessment, medical and dental history, we focused clinically seeing what was uh, happening in her mouth and we could see that there were some areas especially around the implants where the gums were a little bit swollen and <clears throat> when we looked especially at the lower left side we found that the gum was um, uh, there was a very uh, uh, on the lower left side there was some swelling and very uh, quite easily it, the area bled very easily when probing and when we looked at the radiograph, which we've got on the screen, we noticed that actually there was a quite extensive advanced bone loss around um, the lower left implant. And this was uh, splintered together with the implant um, uh, posteriorly to that. And on the lower right side, there was also another implant that had quite um, <coughs> extensive bone loss. And again, this was uh, strange enough, uh, splintered to a natural tooth. So with the re remainder of the lower remaining teeth, there was some question a questionable prognosis to some of the roots of the teeth. At the time, the patient was not complaining about any problems. So we focused on the main complaint, which was the bone loss around those implants. And we looked at the upper jaw together, looked at the results of the x-ray and confirmed what we saw in the mouth, that the margins of some of these restorations was uh, not ideal and there was obviously some work to be done and some things that needed to be improved and quite complex treatment we're not going to go into the whole process of treatment planning with this particular case but the idea was to remove this these failing implants as a first approach and then look at further down the line to actually replace some of these restorations with better fitting um, restorations so first appointment was under local anesthetic we sectioned these bridges and we made sure that we left them nice and polished and they came out relatively easily. Um, soon afterwards, the patient felt much better. The irritation and the reason the gums were swollen, um, the cause of that was removed. And when the patient returned back, we looked at the areas on the upper left side. Now these implants that were placed, they were actually working well for the patient but the discomfort that she had with cleaning was uh, of concern and with looking at the x-rays we could see that obviously something needed to be done before we landed up with uh, bone loss uh, similar to what's happened on the lower um, on the lower side so that's the area that we're focusing on today you can see the implants when we have a, a close-up look you can see that the 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 position where this cement retained bridge should have reached to Basically, there's quite a big gap there and there was some excess cement. You can see these areas there where um, the bridge hadn't fitted all the way um, in the right position. So you can see also, yeah, I mean, this poor fit of this these abutments, you can see there's actually a very, very, very uh, poor area there. So that one had already been removed 
and this is the uh, close-up intraoral picture and we can see that here's the original bridge that was uh, cement retained and we can see uh, quite a large intraproximal uh, space uh, present and the idea here was to remove this we did this without any local anesthetic and we did that with um, a tapered diamond burr um, and a tungsten carbide beaver type design we eventually got to the access abutment uh, to access the abutment screws and remove them and cleaned all the excess cement that was actually in contact with the tissues and all in all the implants were actually working well these are noble active uh, regular platform implants you can see there's a little bit of uh, lack of uh, tissue in this area but overall the areas were nice and healthy now what we did is we actually had pre-planned beforehand and we got a um, some abutments from des components and we uh, requested multi-unit abutments from desk components they're a great company to work with especially in the uk they provide great support and um, really like one-stop shop where you can get a number of components for different systems so i really recommend them and we can see here these abutments were fitted into place and even though there was a small amount of metal uh, showing of the abutment we chose to keep this abutment because if we look at the area over here you can see there was bone actually in this area so we didn't really want to go with a shorter abutment because that would mean that we'd have to create a small flap and actually remove some bone in order for that for a short rebutment to fit and aesthetically it wasn't a concern for the patient so we accepted that that um, this abutment was showing so once the abutments had been talked down to 30 newton centimeters we actually went ahead and took both digital and uh, analog impressions and here you can see these are the digital scan bodies which we used um, for with our intraoral scanner we use a medit r500 scanner which is a great piece of equipment we're really enjoying using that and here's a close-up of what those abutments looked like that we got from des this is the actual abutment they come in different heights and different um, um, angulations really helpful especially for multiple units we do almost all our multiple units on uh, multi-unit abutments so i can highly recommend them and then this is a picture of the actual t base that fits within the zirconia structure which was going to be made so another close-up picture here you can see the occlusal view of the um, scan bodies um, we also took a um, analog impression with normal abutment level open tray impression copings and before taking the impression we actually used some Duralay resin we splintered that together to make sure that those copings were nice and rigid and weren't going to move during the impression taking and uh, casting of the uh, stone model and we requested from the dense laboratory a full contour uh, zirconia bridge and you can see over here that uh, this is the, the final bridge uh, fitted in place we did question whether we could have gone for single units um, but because the position of this implant was not exactly in the uh, first premolar position you can see it's actually between two teeth um, we decided that it was best for the actual bridge design that this was still uh, four units splintered together you can see there's the one axis hole of the one implant there's the second one and the third one over there so this zirconia bridge was made out of um, full contour zirconia made by a company called idit which makes some great products some very neat solutions for um, zirconia solutions and it just gives you peace of mind when you're using uh, solutions that have no porcelain um, the aesthetics is improving dramatically and it's looking very lifelike and very natural and you have a, no risk of porcelain fracture so very helpful especially for implant restorations here you can see the lab work that was done and the here you can see the, uh, the this only is glazed uh, and stained on the surface you can see very uh, very slightly the T base of the zirconia restoration and it would have been nice if we could have put a little bit more detail here into the tissue profile but again because that implant was exiting there this was uh, quite a straight profile in this area nevertheless um, occlusally it looked good and we were happy 
Um, one tip I would mention for these access holes is that they are very parallel and very precise when they're milled in the milling machine. And you have to make sure that you pack PTFE tape very densely into those um, um, access holes because if you don't, then the composite resin can sometimes actually get pushed into any void that you might have. And then that creates a, a food trap that patients feel like they've actually lost part of the uh, composite resin filling. So once we pack it nice and uh, densely, then we seal it off with the resin. And afterwards, we can see this is the after. You can see these are the abutments in place, like well clear of the bone. And the fit of the actual full contour zirconia bridge is fitting uh, very nicely, very precise. And it really was a pleasure to fit. It was really um, very good. Um, we saw the patient afterwards and she felt a lot better, much better um, ease of access for cleaning with small brushes or uh, incidental uh, floss. So all in all, um, a very nice result. Just to show you, this is the before. Okay, you can see with those spaces and the cement retained um, bridge with excess cement that, you know, possibly is uh, the poor profile of this abutment and potentially some um, excess cement that was underneath this caused this implant to fail. And you can see how this looks um, afterwards. So uh, quite a big improvement. You can see really nice profile. Okay, so um, I hope that you've enjoyed that video. And um, if you have any questions and you want to get in touch with me, please post a question below. I'll do my best to get um, to everyone. And um, if uh, this goes well, I'll maybe make another video and uh, post it on social media. All right. Thank you so much and have a great day. Cheers. Bye-bye.